and welcome back guys i look a little rough been sick but uh it's been a hot minute life's been busy but uh we're going trucking there we go first we're gonna wash off this thing falls here in michigan and that means every single bird in the united states is at every single farm this truck wasn't this dirty last week so we're gonna get out the power washer She ain't perfect, but for a pressure washer in five minutes, it's a lot better than she was. You know, you gotta make things look good going into the co-op, especially when you're the new guy. You know, maybe they'll actually think you are something or think you know something. If you know, you pull in there with a clean, nice truck, but really, you're all hat. You're all cowboy hat, no cows. Uh, yes, in the morning we're going trucking. Uh, one of my longtime co-workers, friends, neighbors, whatever you want to call them, has some corn that he needs brought into the elevator. He's actually got his cart and combine full, but uh, my trailer is currently on another truck harvesting soybeans. So we're just getting this truck ready and waiting for a trailer, I suppose. So it's uh, Saturday, so the co-op won't be open real late. Um, but hopefully get three, four loads in there before they close down for the night and then we can load up and I can bring one in on Monday morning. Fast forward three hours. Bought a trailer yesterday from the family, bought a lead dump. However, they're using it for soybean harvest and it's currently dumping soybeans. The guy I'm hauling corn for, his combine and cart is full sitting in the field right now for waiting for me. I'm waiting for one of the guys to dump the soybeans, drop the trailer. I'm gonna pick up the trailer, then I can head to the field. I was hoping to, I was hoping this wouldn't take this long. Well, if this isn't just farming, that guy just snapped off. So I got two blues. There's my broken line. Literally, didn't even leave the farm and it snapped off. It's not one thing, it's another, I swear. After many trials and tribulations, wow, those some bright lights. Many trials and tribulations. We're finally off to do some trucking. There's the man of the hour, picking away. I don't know why my phone is, I think I got oil on the lens or something. Man of the hour. So they filled me with a, not quite a full combine and then a full 650 bushel cart. She's almost full. Uh, it's about 11 o'clock right now. That's town north of there if you can't tell. But uh, honestly, this is my first time ever trucking grain for somebody other than my family or myself. A bit odd, but you get paid by the bushel. So I'm trying to shove as much as I can in this trailer because uh, every load I make, if I can make a couple extra bucks, it counts, you know? So you don't get rich hauling grain, but it pays the bills. Got the milk loaded up. I will say, and I will admit, in the tiers of morning people, I'm probably the lowest, lowest tier. Unless we're going hunting or fishing or on a trip somewhere, I cannot stand getting up before seven don't get me wrong i'll work till two three in the morning every single night but waking up before seven is just ugh. Ugh. my body just hates it always has i used to have to get up for the bus at i think the bus got to my house at like 5 25 a.m because i lived i was the first stop and i lived the farthest from school of anybody I think it was 5.25 a.m. So I'd have to get up at 5, get ready. And I'd get on the bus and I'd sleep for two hours. 
I don't miss that. I hate, hate getting up before the sun comes up. My limo awaits. day I don't see a single truck in line which would be awesome Pulled into the co-op 10 minutes before they open and be in truck number one I was really expecting to be third fourth fifth back there a ways but I'll take it I guess oh just dumping myself Be out of here in 10 minutes. Cousins pulled in right behind me, number one and number two on the day. So they're combining for the neighbors, so they're here dumping trucks. So this is our scale ticket, 1,072 bushel. So number one, number one issue with trucking like this is waiting. <laughs> Sometimes there's a huge line at the co-op uh, they were trying to get just now the guys farming had a way wagon out here and we're trying to calibrate their combine so luckily I don't live too far from here so I just drove home and grabbed lunch and laid down on the couch and watched some YouTube for about a half hour but uh yeah a little slow going, but that's okay. It's a Saturday. It's a nice Saturday. It's about 60, partly cloudy. Got nothing. I mean, I got other things I could do, but just just hanging out. Looks like I'm getting a little gray. I hope that's just blonde hair. Oh, we've got movement. Looks like we're going to get half loaded. Cart's on his way. surely six rows at a time a little bit of trash in this stuff that's okay my last load looked kind of like this and they only they ain't get docked so it's added weight added room relaxing just just waiting behind me have an open pit barbecue going. I don't know what they're cooking, but it smells dang good. I just ate lunch, but that still smells really good. We're so gallant, please. And the rockets red glare. One thing I really appreciate, and I think a lot of places around the country don't get, is on uh, our local southwest Michigan area, um, bear with me, we're still all, most of us are very conservative, very religious, and very patriotic. Um, almost every combine in the area will have American flags on it. Um, but at noon, every single day, our local country station plays some sort of rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. Every single noon, 365 days a year. And I know at Christmas time as well, they also play several prayers throughout the day and stuff. And it's just the little small town stuff to let you know there's still good quality, patriotic, 
loving people out. Small farm town. I don't think I brought it up, but this is the guy that bought, I had a 12 acre field of corn that I wanted to chop for silage and he bought it from me. Goes to church with us. Uh, he actually hired, well, leased our manure spreader, my wife and I's manure spreader, our tractor, and then my wife's running it for him. And now I've got a buddy who knows him as well, who's gonna come ride with me to bring a load of corn to town, and he's got nothing better to do on a nice sunny Saturday. All over the place. Uh, had a buddy hop in with me for an hour. Made another turn. The guys combining wanted to go get lunch, so they went to Arby's in town, got lunch. So I'm off and I'm gonna go take some samples of my corn and see what percent moisture it's running. See how close we are to combining oh. that. We're gonna test some moisture of this stuff. It's pretty dry. Stalks, or the leaves are still a little bit green. But this stuff was planted. I think the first week of June or last week of May, I can't remember. So we're gonna just peel off a couple ears. And then I'm gonna go to the back. There's a back section. That's a different variety. I'm gonna go back there and grab a couple ears from there too. Then we're gonna put them on the moisture sampler. I will say those are some nice, right to the tip, fully filled out ears of corn. I'm pretty happy with that. Hopefully this field's gonna yield pretty good. I'm not sure if I've showed this before in a video, but this is my biggest field. Uh, it's about 60 acres, 55, 60. Depending on if you can plant the wet spots or not. Um, pretty heavily deer damaged here on the edges, but uh, once you get in the middle, things look pretty good. Ignore the horribly dirty windshield, please. But uh, so there's about 30 up front and then you take this two track right to the back and there's about another 30 in the back. So you know, it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy. We got a lot of rain this year. Um, the stuff on the edge is super shaded, so it's not dead at all, and it didn't build much veneer, but, you know, it is what it is. Over here at the uncle's place, he's got a moisture tester, so we're gonna go throw some corn on that moisture tester and see where she's at. They're still doing beans, so that's actually my trailer. But I don't have electric tarp hookups, so I had to use one of the other ones. So basically all I'm doing is cracking ears, throwing 250 grams in there. Then, excuse my hand, tossing here in the moisture tester. Start, set it to corn. It's all worked up around outside, it's all dirty as it is already, so. So I ran two samples across. I ran a sample of three years out of the front field, and then a sample which out of the front field they ran. Kind of surprised me. The front field's a little sandier, but the corn looked a lot greener. And it ran 24.8% moisture. Um, and then I ran a sample across four ears out of the back field. And that was like dead, dead. The ears were hanging. And that ran 25.9. So I, it's usually the opposite. Usually the back is a heavier soil and that stays alive longer. But I'll take it. Um, not quite ready to combine yet, but that's fine. Uh, I'd like to get around 20 before I combine it. Here in Michigan, you very rarely ever get corn before below 20%, and it, you almost never get it where you can toss it straight in the bin. So I'm hoping to get it down towards 20% though, minimize my drying costs. Um, so it's gonna be probably two weeks yet, but that's okay. It's only the second week of October. No big deal. We got sunny and 60s in the forecast, so hopefully it'll dry out a little more. And no, I cut that video off because there was another guy there dumping soybean trucks, and I don't quite feel 
comfortable enough videotaping in front of people. Especially not talking to a camera in front of people. Just a little weird. Back here at home, all these fat boys. Just got a little splash of feed. So, I'm gonna throw some oil. 4840 needs some oil. So I got oil. I don't know why that's low on oil, but it does apparently, so whatever. And then I'm gonna put that corn planter back together that you saw a couple videos ago, cause I got busy and haven't had time to. Maybe bring that back. Gotta go out to the field, get my semi. The guy who was combining loaded it and it's sitting out in the field. And it's chores time, I think. So all I gotta do is slap these meters back in there, 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 there. And then I noticed, being my idiot self, apparently that pin was pretty rotted out because I, I pulled on this hard when I was cleaning it out and yeah, she, uh, she broke. So I have to find a new pin for that. This is just really basic mechanic work. There's nothing exciting to it. Just gotta line stuff up. A bee that doesn't like me. Two rusty nuts that don't really like to start. Impact. So now all I gotta do to transport this is I'm popping off these drive chains from the sprockets on the wheels to make sure nothing runs, nothing rotates, nothing nothing works going down the road. So fairly simple. This spring is really worn out now that I look at it. This is just gotta unhook that, pull that guy over. I don't know if I could, you guys are gonna even be able to see this because I'm trying to do this with one hand, looking at it. Yeah, I just, just this has got to pop off and come around and go around all these brackets. So I'm, I'm gonna do that too. Around looking for some zip, walking around looking for some zip ties and thought I'd say hi to this cute little bugger. Oh, you little spunky. Hi. You're not so sure about me. You're definitely part beef. You're definitely a beef breed. You're not so sure about humans. Boop. Also, I forget if I showed this, but I forget. Everything is blending together at this point. We got a bunch of turkeys, and they're idiots. You guys are got you got to be on the other side of the fence. Ay ay ay. Didn't really <clears throat> didn't record anything the rest of the night. So from that last clip you saw heard thunder. Checked the radar. Rain was about 20 minutes away, away. So flew to get my semi. Covered that up and flew through chores and came back home and had dinner and so, if you guys enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, guys. Thanks for watching.